Gucci, Gucci two times, say it two times, Gucci, Gucci two times, say it two times, Gucci, Gucci two times. Right now. So let's start here with LeBron James. So LeBron, who again, I don't know why the one of the best power forwards in the history of the NBA has amazing things to say on matters of immigration. I, I wasn't aware that that penetrating the paint has anything to do with making border policy. But in any case, here's LeBron James saying that Trump has given racism an opportunity to be out. Again, what he's really saying here is that because of Donald Trump, everybody in Donald Trump's base, they're secret racist, but now they're coming out. Well, the guy in control has given uh, people in racism, you know, negative racism, an opportunity to be out and outspoken without, um, without fear. You know, and, uh, and that's the fearful thing for us. Um, because it's, it's with you and it's around every day, but you know, he's allowed people to come out and just feel confident about doing negative things. Okay, so he, th this idea that Trump has emboldened racists, what he is really suggesting, listen, I said this during the campaign when he was actively appealing to the alt-right, is that Trump should have done more to tamp down racism. But what, what LeBron is actually saying here, LeBron James, when he says that Trump has given racism an opportunity to be out of the closet, and then he says, I, I like when he says negative racism as opposed to presumably positive racism. The idea that racism begins and ends with Donald Trump, I think, is an exaggeration. Now, what LeBron says is not all that awful. You know, I think that you can make the case that, that Trump did that during the campaign. But what Greg Popovich does is it really is awful. And this is where he says that Trump can't even prove to me that he's not a racist. There's no way Trump can prove to me he's not a racist other than by presumably agreeing with Greg Popovich, the coach of the, the uh, San Antonio Spurs. It's insidious and it's still uh, our national sin that we have to work on. And every time I hear somebody say they're, they're not a racist, you know they are. Okay, this is the logic of the left. Okay, and Greg Popovich, I mean, this is so obnoxious. I like Popovich as a coach, but he should really shut up about politics because this is an obnoxious, ridiculous statement. That if somebody says they're not a racist, every time I hear somebody say they're not a racist, you know they are. Okay, Greg, I'll say you're a racist. How's that? You're a racist. Now, how do you respond? Presumably you respond by saying, no, I'm not a racist. But according to your logic, this now means you're a racist. So we're now caught in a Knights and Knaves logic problem. Where if, the minute somebody's accused of being a racist, there's no way to get out of it, right? Because if you deny that you're a racist, then that means you're a racist. And if you say that you're a racist, then you're obviously a racist. So there's no way to avoid being a racist. As, somebody, as soon as somebody throws the charge racist at you, we're all supposed to run for the hills and just assume that that person is a racist. And then you wonder why Trump won. You wonder why Trump still has a solid base. It's because everyone's attempt to lump together Trump's base with Trump, everyone's attempt to lump Trump's policies together with Trump's rhetoric, everyone's attempt to take Trump's individual statements and then suggest that it is indicative of a broader worldview, I don't know that Trump has a worldview about anything. I mean, I'm not even sure that Donald Trump has a worldview about Starburst. There's a story yesterday, by the way, it's pretty great, that, that staffers at one of the Senate offices were being tasked with going through boxes of Starburst and picking out the pink and red Starburst as a gift to President Trump, which is just astonishing. I hope if I were ever president one day, I would force everybody, I wouldn't just buy the sour packs of jelly beans, I would force Senate staffers to go through entire bags of jelly beans and try to determine which one were the sour jelly bellies and then make them give them to me. It'd be like Willy Wonka's factory and make them all into my Oompa Loompas. In any case, it's not just NBA stars and, and coaches who are doing this, this silly nonsense. Bill Press, right, the, the famous lefty, he suggests that Trump's base is filled with extreme wacko racists. This is where the left is going. Good luck with this one, gang. Good luck with this one. Remember last week, Stephen Colbert suggested that America was the real bleep hole, right? That all these other countries were not bleep holes. America was a bleep hole because Trump was president. The disdain for Americans who disagree with the left is really coming out now because they're using disdain for Trump as the proxy. And I think that this is what so many Trump supporters and Trump voters are basing their support for Trump on. I think wrongly in some ways, but I think that this is what they're basing their support on is every time they read an attack on Trump, they read an attack on them because every time there's an attack on them, it's an attack on Trump, right? And the, the, what Bill Press here says is so indicative of a worldview and mentality that comes from the left that everyone can read into the verbiage. Right? When, when, listen to what Bill Press says, and then you'll see that people make the connection between what Bill Press said and what Hillary Clinton said and what Elizabeth Warren is saying today about Trump. I am sick and tired of talking about Donald Trump's base. So he's got 35 percent okay. of the most extreme, wacko, racist, I don't know, mm -hmm. rednecks in the country. 
and every password I, 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 I will all of them. I'm going to speak. Let me, speak, let me but, speak for the deplorable. Well, let, me, let me speak for, for the for the no, average I, American. If you we have another term for the. Uh, what but you, you know, everything is always oh, that. This is fine. He can say whatever he wants because it pleases his base. He can do whatever. He said it best. Yeah. He could go out on Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and his base would say, "Good for you, Donald Trump." Well, Come on. Let me tell you more than that base. Now, I've said before that I think there is some truth to the idea that Donald Trump's base is too attached to Donald Trump. But I also think that it is true that one of the reasons that they're so attached to Trump is because they see Trump and the slings and arrows that he takes as a proxy for the slings and arrows that they would take if he were not there. That how the left feels about Donald Trump is exactly how the left feels about Donald Trump's base. And they felt that way about Donald Trump's base when Donald Trump wasn't there. This is why I think, I've said this before, I think in many ways 2012 broke the country. I think that the attempt to paint Mitt Romney and his supporters in the same exact way as the left now attempts to paint Donald Trump and his supporters is demonstrative of why Donald Trump won. You can only call people racist, sexist, bigot, homophobes for so long before they finally say, listen, whoever they call a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe must not be one and everybody's full of crap. And whoever stands up to that nonsense is going to be the guy that I back. I think it is almost as simple as that. I think that Trump's presidency is a backlash. I think it's a backlash against the entire left, which suggested that everyone on the right was a deplorable, not just when they were voting for Trump, but long before that. I have spent my entire life being called a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe by the left. I am not any of those things, and my entire career is proof positive that I am not those things. But the left has suggested that anyway, about somebody like me, right, a guy who did not support Trump. But the idea that, they, that now they're going to attack Trump, I think this is what's happened. I think that People are making a mistake of logic, but it's an understandable mistake of logic. The mistake of logic that they are making is they are, they are buying into the idea that any attack on Trump is an attack on them. It isn't, but it is true that the leftists attack on Trump very often. It is sort of an attack on them, right? Bill Press's attack on Trump is really not an attack on Trump. It's an attack on everybody on the right. Elizabeth Warren's attacks on Trump are not just an attack on Trump. They're an attack on everyone on the right, including people like me who did not vote for Trump. This is why you see this grand and ridiculous disconnect in the leftist media on how they approach people like me who back Trump's policies, but don't necessarily think Trump is a great president or good for the country in a lot of other ways. Right? The way they approach that is they say, listen, if you really don't like what Trump is saying, you shouldn't support any of his policies, which suggests to me an ulterior motive. You're painting yourselves into a corner. Democrats, you want to keep doing this? You want to keep on the deplorable stuff? All you have to do is keep saying Trump is a racist and that his base is racist for supporting his policies, not just his rhetoric. Hillary Clinton got herself in all sorts of trouble. Hillary Clinton lost the election in large part on the basis of suggesting that the vast majority of Americans, or at least a large swath of Americans, were deplorables, racists, bigots, alt-righters, right? that anyone who supported Trump was a member of this group, that anybody who was sanguine about Trump as president was ignoring his bigotry in order to vote for him. Right, that all of these people had to believe that bigotry and racism didn't matter, making them racists and bigots. And there are a lot of people who felt like, you know what, Hillary's a jerk, I'm going to vote against her just because she disdains ordinary Americans. Democrats are verging on that. When they say that Trump is a racist, they're not just saying Trump is a racist usually. Okay, what Democrats are usually saying is that all the things that Trump has done are racist. Right? This is the Chuck Schumer point. That if you want to prove you're not a racist, you have to agree with me. But there are a lot of people who don't agree with Chuck Schumer and who are not racist. Right? I don't agree with Chuck Schumer, I'm not a racist. Hey, I don't agree with Chuck Schumer. And in fact, I think Chuck Schumer's policies with regard to immigration are kind of bigoted because he wants to benefit certain countries over other countries as opposed to using a merit-based system. Right? But Democrats, when they suggest that Trump's policies and his rhetoric are all of a piece, that everyone who agrees with Trump on policy must be a racist, what they are doing is driving away large segments of the American population. They're making you choose. You can either choose Trump's policies and his racism, or you can choose Democratic policies and their non-racism. Well, what if I neglect to, to make that choice? What if I say I like a lot of Trump's policies, but I don't like a lot of the things Trump says? Well, Democrats say I'm not allowed to make that choice. They've created this false dichotomy, this false binary. And I'm now supposed to fall into that trap. The problem is that alienates voters. right? If you're a Democrat and you're saying that, you should think twice about saying that. You should think twice about saying that Trump is a racist, not just because it's questionable as to whether Trump is actually a Richard Spencer type racist, but also because if you're going to say Trump is a racist, you need to say his comments are what make him a racist, not his policies. But Democrats aren't doing that. They're just saying that Trump is a racist bully and the implication, and I think that all Trump voters are, are reading into that. I think a lot of people who are not even Trump voters, I didn't vote for Trump and I'm reading into that. I think what they're reading that when people say Trump is a racist, what they're really saying is anyone who agrees with his immigration policy is a racist. 
right? That they're using Trump as a proxy for anyone who agrees with Trump policies. So when Elizabeth Warren says Trump is a racist bully, she's actually, I think, painting Democrats into a dangerous corner, ripping the American population by proxy. Donald Trump is a racist bully, and we know how to deal with bullies. We do not back down. We do not shut up. We fight back. And no matter what they throw at us, nevertheless, we persist. Nevertheless, we persist. Of course, there's her slogan because she wants to run for president. Okay, again, the idea that, that Elizabeth Warren is going to lead the fight against bigotry after using Native, false Native American heritage, allegedly, to gain her job at Harvard Law School is beyond insane. She's not the only person Democrats are trotting out. Again, if you're going to go out and call Trump a racist, you have to use non-racist to call Trump a racist. You can't try out Al Sharpton. Okay, they tried out Al Sharpton, a guy who is legitimately responsible for, for at least helping to incite riots in Crown Heights in 1991 against Orthodox Jews, and then again against Freddie's Fashion Mart in New York City that ended with the burning down of the store and the death of many people who are minorities. Al Sharpton is one of the worst racists of the last 35 years, and here's Al Sharpton ripping Trump as a racist. You don't have to uh, spray paint the N-word over the Oval Office and sleep with a KKK hood to be a racist. If you have racist policies, say racist things, operate in a racist manner, you are a racist. Period. End of story. Okay, so it's that part where he says racist policies that's fascinating, right? When he says racist policies, that's the part where Democrats are going to lose everybody. If they just said Trump's a bad character, I think a lot of people agree. If they said Trump might be borderline racist in terms of his race, in terms of his statements, I think a lot of people would probably agree or at least give Democrats the benefit of the doubt. When they say you must agree with us or you are racist just like Trump, you're going to lose the entire population. And now they're trotting out celebrities to make this case. So in just a second, I'm going to explain to you which celebrities are actually making this case. Apparently, it's everybody in the NBA, essentially. And they're not being they're not being coy about this. They don't just believe that Trump is a racist. They believe that anyone who agrees with Donald Trump on policy is a racist. The Democrats, I, I think this is such a major political mistake they're making. 